um, most of you will be familiar with. But as you know, the mission is really to extend a human health span and lifespan by researching and financing and commercializing longevity therapeutics. And that in an open and accessible and democratic manner. So this is a quote from our white paper that you could find on the website. And so what, what's really new here, I think the sweet spot that we are talking about here is the early stage funding that we can provide for longevity research with a high risk and high reward uh, project kinds of, of nature. And um, we've heard a lot and, and you know you better, but, but there's not really this, this lack of, of these kinds of funding availability in the industry. And this is really where VitaDAO comes in. And as a project, VitaDAO is innovative on, on several fronts, really. So it's not only the IEP NFT framework that we are talking about here today, but it's also really the governance. So, so what we do as, as a DAO, as a decentralized autonomous organization, is that we're giving patients and researchers uh, the voice uh, to have a direct impact on that on the research that they care about themselves. So this um, this vein of decentralized governance is, is really a way for more inclusivity, for harnessing crowd intelligence, hopefully, and optimizing our decision making capabilities as a group. Um, so really by, by harnessing all the opinions, getting the voices heard, and then uh, coming to a conclusion as a group, as opposed to like a small back room where you have this, this elite group of decision makers. We really want to follow this open approach, be inclusive and be more progressive, hopefully, than incumbents. And um, in terms of governance, the first proposals have already passed. So we have three phases where the community is involved at any point. It starts with the discussion on our Discord channel, Discord server, where you just can voice ideas and 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 like just thoughts really, and they get refined over time. Uh, phase two is, is on the discourse forum, um, gov.vitadao.com, where the proposals are getting in to shape um, through feedback from, from the community. And ultimately there's an on-chain vote on the, on the Ethereum blockchain um, where everyone uses their Vita governance tokens to, to vote on the proposals. And we had already uh, a few ones passed. Um, so that's really, really exciting to see that the, the process works really. Um, and yeah, so this is also really an invitation to take part in that governance process to everyone join the Discord server, uh, visit our Discourse forum and, and just, you know, propose your idea, give feedback on others. And yeah, let, let's, let's get this going. So over the last weeks, um, we have all, also discussed the proposal VDP5. Um, that's just the, the name of the proposal, which is the funding for the Shabby Knudsen lab. Um, and yeah, the IP NFT transfer that is involved and that is really what we're celebrating today. And with that, back to Stefano. Yeah, thanks a lot, um, Theo, for the intro on VitaDAO. And yeah, VDP5 is why we're here today. Um, and now I would like to hand it over to Audi that kicks off the first step um, of the celebration um, by executing the, yeah, the first step of the transfer of the NFT. Um, on chain, Audi, um, the stage is yours. Can you guys hear me okay? Did you, uh... That was a silent yes. <laughs> Are you, can you hear me okay? Yes, Audi, we can hear okay. you perfectly. Right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so I'm getting ready to uh, transfer and order this uh, DID from Clemens, who, uh, gave, who sent it to me just a minute ago. All right, uh, let me share my screen here.
So this is the uh, CLI that Nevermind gave us to do these um, transactions. And I'm ordering a DID. And once I click this button, we have to wait a little while. So I'll probably cut off my, my stream and we'll come back when the order process is complete and see Clem um, transfer it back to us. So. All right, so there it is. You can see the price. I'm gonna let you guys continue and we'll come back when Clem is ready to transfer. Awesome. Thank you a lot, Audie, for kicking off um, this process. And yeah, now I really would like to hand over the word to Paul and Tyler. Um, and yeah, what is Molecule and what is an IP NFT and, and why are we here today to celebrate that milestone? So yeah, please, please take it over. Cool. Thanks so much, Stefano. Um, Hi, everyone. Really excited to be here today on, on what is quite a historic day. Even with Audi just typing in that command line prompt for a moment, it's felt sort of like the <laughs> rover landing on Mars a little bit. I like like the, the feeling that we're giving this. It's really cool. Um, maybe so a little bit about what we've been building. So Molecule has been on a, on a mission to really try and decentralize drug development for the past three years. And the purpose of doing that is really to create um, structures where researchers and patients can be tied more closely together. Governance of things like valuable therapeutic assets can be distributed quite broadly. And essentially we can utilize Web3 technologies to really enable new funding structures that are, that are quite novel, similar to what is being done with BetaDAO. And Molecule has really been building a lot of the, the technical architecture to enable these transactions, both from, from a technical perspective and, and also a legal perspective, which is really the, the prime reason that we're here today. Um, Paul, would you mind just sharing yeah. the screen for a second? Cool. Yeah, we have a we have a little presentation to just run you guys through um, to give kind of to provide context on the overall thing that is happening. Can you guys see our screen? Cool. Back to you, Tana. Cool. So again. Our, our core mission is to really help figure out how to bring intellectual property and real world assets, both in the form of, of data sets, of patents, of sub licenses, into frameworks where they can be funded and collaboratively worked on. Um, so basically trying to figure out ways, particularly for academic researchers who are sort of working in this pre-commercial phase, um, trying to cross something called the valley of death, which is where a lot of innovation really struggles to get funding and ultimately make it to patients. We're on a mission to try to figure out how to accelerate that process by taking advantage of some really interesting novel funding and governance frameworks that have been emerging in, in the Web3 space. And, and the, one of the first ways that we're doing this is really around this idea of, of the creation of an IP NFT, which is a new type of standard that really allows you to take um, any sort of legal document relating to academic research or, or a particular therapeutic innovation. So let's say a license or a patent in this case, and actually plug that into Web3. And by plugging that into Web3, you can do really interesting things with it. You could have a DAO that holds it, for example, you can collateralize it, you could borrow against it, you could allow it to be governed by a community. Um, and so this is something that we're really excited about because this is one of the core technologies that really enables VitaDAO to begin owning assets and governing projects in the sort of longevity space and academic research space. More broadly, Molecule is, is really trying to create a, a marketplace that would be akin to an open sea for those of you for, who, are, who are familiar with, let's say, the art space in, in NFTs that really caters to, to biomedical research. And the long term goal here is that as a researcher, I would be able to come onto this platform with a, with a project, let's say, that is sort of at a pre patent stage, maybe a pre clinical proof of concept stage, create a project page. Um, sort of discuss my needs, what the project's goals are, what I'm looking for, who the ideal partners would be, how I would like this to be funded, and very quickly actually create, let's say, a profile that can then um, actually go into an NFT minting pro pro um, process for that particular for that particular project. And if and through that, there are then a lot of things that could happen, which which Paul will talk about in a second, and really unlocking the power of Web three to actually fund and develop these assets in a in a productive way. Cool. Thank you so much, Tata. Um, I'm going to run you guys through a little bit what our 
what we're trying to enable at a high level from our technology stack, because that'll help contextualize where the, this historic IP NFT transaction comes into play. Um, so at a very high level to abstract kind of a way, what we're, as Tata explained, our goal is to enable researchers to upload IP and data, turn that IP into NFTs, and then uh, through a layer that we call molecule finance, enable various um, fundraising um, or financialization uh, strategies around these IP NFTs. And then essentially enable these IP NFTs to travel into openly and democratically owned structures uh, such as VitaDAO. Um, so, I mean, NFTs over the past year have literally exploded. I think in the past 30 days alone, OpenSea as a platform uh, that predominantly trades in, in NFT artworks, I think just crossed the $1.2 billion, $1.2 billion in volume. Um, and uh, there's a lot of other use cases where NFTs are starting to be explored, for example, in music royalty rights. Um, and maybe to contextualize here, so when we talk about IP NFTs, we always talk about um, the specific use case in, in biopharma. Um, so the question is, what is a biopharma NFT really? So for us, it's a new fundraising mechanism for early stage research. Uh, and then it's two things really, it's a new technical framework, which allows combining NFTs with federated data storage and access control. Um, this is where you later hear from Nevermind, who have, who have been an instrumental partner uh, for us in really ensuring that um, this early IP NFT des design can meet, let's say, market requirements in terms of, um, in terms of really making this, this NFT something that will be valuable in, in the broader biopharma industry beyond the Web3 space. Really trying to map, um, uh, map the current business logic that we find in biotech um, and kind of the needs around data storage. Um, and on the, other, on the other side, it's a new legal framework that utilizes sub-licensing agreements um, and uh, through those enables on-chain entities like VitaDAO to hold real world, uh, real world research IP. Um, and that's really why this is kind of a historic moment. It's never kind of happened that, let's say real world biopharma research has been minted and, and transacted on, on a public ledger. Uh, cool, so this is a, this is a high level anatomy um, of the technical design of the IP NFT. Um, and these are kind of the different components that come together on the one side, it's a legal contract, which is attached to the NFT. Then it's a set of smart contracts that run on Ethereum. Uh, and then it's really the metadata of the, of the NFT, and then the encrypted IP patent and data, um, which can contain, um, yeah, different types of information. We're trying to build these in a very generalized sense so that they can be broadly applied for different therapeutic areas. Um, here's, a, here's a recap again of the actual like flow of what happens when one of these IP NFTs are, um, are transacted. Um, the core infrastructure that is being used is uh, Ethereum to transfer the NFT between different parties and enable um, the sale uh, of those agreements. Then um, ledgering decentralized identifiers on Arweave. Uh, and then uh, lastly, and very importantly for the solution, uh, it uses, utilizes the Nevermind gateway, which we'll hear more about later, which enables any holder of the NFT um, to in the future access the, the data that is really generated in this research project um, once it's funded. Um, Clemens, by the way, who's also on this call, wrote a really excellent uh, articles. Uh, we have further technical articles coming out around how this infrastructure really operates and, and how it works. Um, but yeah, just maybe to the, to, the, to the developers or technical folks on the call, um, just to give you guys a basic overview of, of how this works. I think what we did, Audi, correct me if I'm wrong, we're currently probably at here. We've, we've had both parties sign the transaction. Or Clemens, maybe you can jump in, in terms of where we are in this. In the we're working on getting there. We're working on getting there. Okay, okay. I think there's a bit of congestion in, in the Ethereum network at the moment. Yes, gas um, prices have gone up quite significantly. Yeah. Actually, interestingly, this is one of the main reasons why gas prices are going up, just this crazy volume of um, that is currently running through, through other NFT marketplaces. Cool. Last but not least, I want to kind of give an overview again of how um, like how, like let's see the high level stakeholder interactions work here because I think that's really crucial. Um, so the core goal, if we think, what are we actually trying to do here? We're trying to enable an, an interaction between two, two parties that is on the one side, the Scheibe Nutzen Lab and the University of Copenhagen. 
uh, who have a really promising early stage longevity um, research project that could uh, generate substantial substantial IP. Um, and then we have BDAO that wants to fund this project and own the IP and data rights. Uh, now, um, it's still quite uh, difficult and cumbersome for Web3 native entities or companies um, or even protocols to interact with real world entities. Um, but in this biopharma use case, it's something that's absolutely necessary. Um, and so the way that the IP NFT uh, in, in this first use case really works is uh, the Schreiber Nutzen Lab has licensed, uh, has licensed the IP to Molecule in a first step. And Molecule is now sub licensing. Uh, the entire rights to the IP and everything that will result from it to an IP NFT. Um, the IP NFT is then created and um, combined with uh, Nevermind's access control and federated data storage, meaning that uh, not only could now the lab also upload, upload future data around, um, around this IP NFT and make it accessible to VitaDAO, but it also means that VitaDAO from this moment forward will be the only uh, let's say the controlling entity of, uh, of this IP asset. Um, and then as a last step, so once the IP NFT is, is created and, um, and forwarded into VitaDAS custodianship, uh, the funding will be released uh, or, or forwarded to the Scheibe Nutzen Lab and effectively the research can, can kick off from that moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a high level overview. If, if any of you guys have questions, please, please feel free to ping us uh, if this is maybe something that you're working on as well. If you have another project, uh, we're currently evaluating um, yeah, a pipeline of, of, of research projects that are interested in this. Uh, I know there's a couple of really promising projects in Vita now as well. Um, and so this is really something that we're now with this first uh, pending that, that everything goes well, uh, a process that we're really looking forward to, to scaling up. Uh, and uh, yeah, with that, uh, I want to thank you all for being here and hand it over to Stefano again. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Tyler. And yeah, it has definitely been uh, um, a wild ride the last few months. Um, and, and really grateful to be here and, and great to see um, how everything is coming together. Um, yeah, so now I would like to um, get Don um, from Nevermind on um, stage. And yeah, Don, I, I know that you've been a crucial part as well on the development and it would be great to know who is Nevermind and, and how does the tech um, behind all of that works and, and got us going where we are right here today. Sure, thanks Stefano. And uh, you're, you're giving too much credit where credit is not due. It wasn't so much me, it was more the team behind Nevermind. Um, so I'm Don Gossin. I'm CEO of a company called Kiko and Nevermind is a product that we created um, specifically for this type of application, uh, effectively allowing for the, the publishing and distribution of assets on chain, but uh, providing for controlled access to those assets where they reside off chain. Um, we've been working on this technology, uh, you know, wholeheartedly for the last two years, but this is sort of a, the culmination of about four years of, of work that we've brought together. And uh, Molecule has been, uh, has, has, has played a significant role in helping us get to this stage. Um, we've, we've also been a part of the VitaDAO um, the, the creation of VitaDAO in, in terms of helping uh, with all with a number of different facets of that project, but in particular, um, when when Paul and Tyler and the rest of the Molecule team approached us to say, "Hey, would you be able to uh, deploy Nevermind in a way that's going to help us um, act and, and control um, the assets that that we want to make available and transfer the ownership to VitaDAO?" Um, you know, we, we jumped at the opportunity to really create, I think, the first application of this kind. Um, so, you know, we're, we're happy to be a part of this journey um, through all of the trials and tribulations that may come along with it. 
but I think I'll, I, I'll stop speaking here and I'm going to hand it over to uh, Rod on our side and he's going to walk through some of the technical nuance of, of how Nevermind is actually operating behind the scenes and give everybody a sense of what the new world actually looks like. Rod? Or maybe not. I think Aitor can help. There he is. We'll hand it over to Aitor instead. Yeah, sorry. Uh, my daughter is uh, around, so I was not uh, planning to speak to her, but uh, yeah, it could be a bit noisy. So, um, uh, never mind uh, what uh, provides is uh, this access uh, control functionality where. Uh, you have uh, different uh, digital assets uh, in, uh, in the different repositories where these digital assets uh, reside. Uh, typically, if you think about this, is the big data lakes or data warehouse environments. Uh, um, uh, data is, uh, everybody saying that is the new oil, oil but uh, um, in, never mind uh, when we think about data, uh, we see a part of uh, the value that is uh, bringing uh, data as a liability, right? So it uh, means that uh, for us it's super important uh, to avoid uh, being uh, moving the data. And uh, what uh, we allow with this kind of use cases is uh, an access control mechanism uh, where uh, data owners uh, can uh, build uh, services on top of this data without uh, copying this uh, data in uh, centralized uh, platforms. So what uh, we are enabling in this uh, integration with uh, 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 molecule in this uh, use case is um, um, the access uh, to uh, digital assets related with uh, IP um, without uh, moving this data from uh, the original uh, repositories where this data should be uh, located. So what we are doing in this uh, flow that was uh, described uh, before in this uh, diagram is uh, one mechanism where uh, the owner of this uh, data is uh, minting one NFT that is uh, uh, representing the ownership of this uh, IP. And uh, this uh, NFT can be traded uh, in the typical way that uh, you can do with uh, DeFi. And uh, what we are allowing is uh, uh, to uh, trade uh, this uh, uh, NFT uh, to some other entity that uh, holding the, this NFT is going to be able to uh, get access uh, to this uh, digital asset that uh, in this case is uh, the uh, documentation that is uh, uh, providing uh, this uh, intellectual uh, property. Uh, what uh, we what uh, we do in order to uh, uh, orchestrate uh, all this uh, complexity is uh, we are having some uh, uh, smart uh, contracts that are providing this uh, access control. Um, sorry, um, and uh, some of chain uh, components uh, that are uh, connecting the, to the different uh, uh, data locations in order to validate that uh, some NFT holder are having enough uh, permissions uh, in order to get access to these uh, files. So this uh, could be uh, uh, very complicated uh, with uh, never mind what uh, we can uh, provide is the functionality in order to uh, orchestrate uh, different uh, conditions uh, in order to uh, provide uh, this access control uh, function. Uh, in this case, what uh, we are doing is uh, only the one that is uh, demonstrating, that is uh, holding this NFT is going to be able to get access to uh, the files uh, associated to this uh, NFT, in this case, uh, this intellectual property. Um, I think uh, that's uh, all and uh, more than enough in order to have uh, a quick intro. Uh, maybe this uh, may uh, to explode uh, some heads. Uh, happy to uh, um, uh, give uh, some uh, more details about all of this. Stefano, uh, I believe Clem is ready to do his transfer. Awesome. Then, yeah, then Clarence, then I would love to um, get you on screen and um, have you transferring um, the IP NFT. Drum roll here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great to see you all and also get to share this moment with you. So I'm starting to share my screen right now. Let me know when you can see the terminal. We can see it. Perfect. So now just to recap what we've just seen, Audi was so kind to um, 
basically order the NFT from us, locking in the agreed amount uh, of 250K USD. And I'm now going to interact with that same escrow contract. I'm going to release the uh, two assets, which is the IP NFT and the UCC to the two parties uh, of this transaction, being Molecule and on the other side, VDL. So here interacting again with um, the uh, with the CLI that Nevermind uh, has so kindly uh, provided to us. Um, I'm just entering here the command, making sure that I don't uh, mix, mix anything up, you know, big moment for all of us, making sure that's all works. So I'm just gonna show here the commands again to make sure that we're doing this correctly. This is the, uh, the overview that they have provided to us and I'm just going into here via the NFTs, and now we can transfer. And here is the ID to this. And let's have it run. I think this will also take a little bit now because uh, we, we're having an eye on the Ethereum network and there's a lot of stuff ha happening, as you know. So I would say from here on, we transfer it back to uh, Stefano and we'll let you know when it's all through. Yeah, thanks so much for that. And um, thanks a lot for um, putting more needles um, below us. And it's, I think the tension is really big and I'm, I'm really looking forward to see the transaction coming through and really like get the next step there. And yeah, I think the one that is most um, impacted by these transactions beside everyone on the Vita DAO side and on the Molecule side is definitely Morton. Um, yeah, thanks a lot for joining us today as well. And um, yeah, fingers crossed for you. <laughs> so could you give us a very quick intro on um, what is um, the project actually that Vita DAO um, decided to fund and which is transferred with this IP NFT framework and yeah, that, that's like definitely what's going there. <laughs> Absolutely, Stefano. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak. And uh, this is, you know, an extremely exciting moment for, for me and my lab. Uh, I can actually, I put together a presentation, um, just a few slides about what it is that we're doing and why this is important. Can you see it? Yes, we can. Great. And so my lab is uh, interested in understanding uh, aging, understanding why we grow old. And, um, you know, speaking with Tyler and Paul about their ideas um, about democratizing treatments, you know, finding something that treats aging is, of course, an incredible step forward. So we try to understand the molecular basis of aging. Why do we do a ring of hair, facial wrinkles? Um, why do we get pigmentation changes in the skin? Um, but of course, um, also other more severe things. Cancer, for example, is very important. 42% of everybody will develop cancer. It's an age-associated phenotype. And dementia, for example, happens, occurs in about 10 to 20% of everybody. So we're very interested in understanding molecular, the molecular basis of these phenotypes and what we can do to make everybody healthier for a long time. Okay, so what is aging? You can define it as time-dependent increase in risk of death. And so that, lead, that looks something like this. So if you look at the risk of dying the next year as a function of your age, we can see as we get older, your risk of dying uh, begins to dramatically increase around you know, 70 or so. Um, and that translates into a survival curve. Uh, this is the survival curve of the, of the Danish population. So here you can see the fraction of the population surviving over time. Uh, and as we get very old, uh, very few are alive. And this is the mean survival. And this in itself is maybe not that interesting, but sort of the foundation of the project that we're doing with Vita Dao is the um, fortunate situation that we actually have access to uh, a lot of data associated with the Danish population. Among others, uh, the registry data for, for pharmaceutical prescriptions. So each line here um, is a group of individuals that have been giving, given a, that have been prescribed a certain drug. 
and it's based on a huge amount of data, one more than one billion prescriptions. So the, the database is massive. Uh, and of course, you can see some drugs associated with longevity and some are associated with shorter lifespan. Um, one of the common drugs that I investigated in aging is a drug called metformin. This is, there's actually a large trial driven by Nils Basla in New York that's looking at metformin. And our uh, ideas or project um, was also spearheaded to some extent by, by his ideas because there was data showing that if you're 70 years old, looking at this graph to the right, if you're 70 years old and you get diagnosed with diabetes and get treated with metformin, you start living longer than uh, just a regular person. And that occurs for at least 10, 15 years. And then the survival curves uh, sort of um, cuts over. So um, there appears to be a survival benefit in the first years, even by having diabetes, as long as you get in the form. So this was very interesting. Um, um, of course, there's an underlying diagnosis, which is diabetes, which probably is why these individuals don't live that long. So of course we have to avoid this diagnostic bias. And so we looked at drugs that have a survival benefit towards other drugs given to the same diagnosis. This is a bit technical, so I'll skip this very briefly and go to the meaty part, which is um, that we then I identified three compounds uh, and obviously there are many other compounds, uh, but there are three compounds that we are fo focusing on and they all are associated with a survival benefit. Uh, and they have um, highly significant uh, better uh, survival output compared with other drugs given for the same diagnosis. And so basically the, the project is to investigate these longevity drugs and test them in various model systems to see if we can actually postpone aging at the cellular level at, uh, and primarily at the level of uh, fruit flies with the potential in the future maybe going into mice. Uh, and uh, obviously this uh, project will not occur without, uh, or would not have occurred without the support of Vita Dao. Uh, so this uh, chart, which, uh, you know, I will not explain to you because this is beyond my, uh, my um, technical skills, uh, but it's, it, it, uh, um, the schematic is of course, what is really driving this uh, project forward. And so, uh, this is my lab, this is some of our other funding source, but of course, the most important part here uh, is Visa Dao that I would like to thank. You know, without Visa Dao, we would not be able to run this project. Uh, and I think what's also exciting for me as a researcher, instead of this IP going to my university, which is good for the university, then this IP actually goes to uh, people that directly invest in it. So I think this is very, uh, very exciting. Uh, possibility and uh, I really look forward to getting to work with this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Morten, for the update um, and for for um, yeah showing us again on what what Vida DAO is actually funding with the IP NFT. Um, and yeah, I think quick update from from the technical side. Um, the transaction um, is still going on. So soon we'll have Audi or Clem jumping up and um, tell us where we stand. Um, yeah, I just would like to quickly give over the word um, to Paul and Tyler for a few sentences. And like, yeah, if you could describe the journey um, over the last few months and um, just share also um, a, a, a few notes on um, how you interacted with Morton and how that all came together. Yeah, for sure. So I mean, I Morton and I actually go back quite some ways. So I was I was a fellow at the National Institute on Aging when when Morton was um, also a postdoc fellow there, and always really admired the work that he was doing. Uh, I think yeah, it's fair to say that Morton was maybe the star postdoc at the NIA. Um, yeah, and so I followed his journey from the time he went to Copenhagen, and always felt that the work he was doing was was really interesting. And I think over the years when, when Molecule was even developing, um, just stayed in touch around, he was always yeah, um, open to hearing our ideas and sort of the frameworks that we were trying to create to really 
decentralized drug development and create novel funding approaches. Um, yeah, so I think over the past maybe year or so, we saw that, you know, Morton was, in, in, from my view, this is an extremely interesting project because it, it actually works backwards from a load of human data, uh, which is a sort of rare benefit in the con uh, when you're thinking about, let's say, developing a novel approach, a novel therapeutic approach for aging. So what we know in this context is that there are a number of medications that are well tolerated in human beings that have been tested in human beings for a long period of time, and that according to this data, um, appear to give a, a pretty strong survival benefit. And so when I heard about this and learned more about the project, um, and, and Paul as well, I think we were both really excited because there was this sort of near-term opportunity to work on something where if you sort of work backwards um, and arrive at sort of what, what mechanism is actually driving these therapeutics forward, it, it could be a conceivably short period of time to actually get these into the clinic and, and begin testing them. And so from, I think from Vita Dow's perspective, when the community was looking for initial projects, Morton was sort of an obvious person to support. I think this is a project that, um, you know, a lot of the people who I've spoken to about, and I know Morton's given talks to the, to the Foresight Institute and various other people, um, would really, really love to see where this goes and what the outcome would be. And, and, you know, I think we have something like metformin, for example, at the moment, which is fairly popular, or I think is something that a lot of people have, uh, have an eye on and are sort of evaluating and looking at in the context of the, of the longevity space. But it appears that there might be a, a broad range of, of therapeutics that haven't been well described in, li in the literature um, that might have a similar or even, even greater effect. So um, yeah, it's obviously an absolute privilege to get to um, bring the community together to, to fund a project like this. And yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of, of sort of what everyone has has put together and, and achieved at this point. For me, this is a, yeah, it's a significant day. It's a big milestone, not only for the longevity space and this exciting project, but also for, yeah, for the Web3 space. I think this is like, if I think about crypto projects, if we could call it that, that, that have a lot of touch points in the real world outside of just DeFi and, and you know, sort of self-referential financial engineering and things like that. There's, there's not a huge number. Um, and crypto has always been quite good at that. But what always excited me was like, yeah, what, what are the touch points with the real world? How can this sort of ecosystem that's forming and um, that is clearly very good at incentiv incentivizing large communities, how can that do something meaningful for um, humanity? And yeah, I think this is a super exciting day for, for that reason. Yeah. Uh, likewise, from my side as well, um, just also a big thank you again uh, to Morton for allowing us to, to conduct this, this first experiment together. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it takes, yeah, it takes, um, it takes courage to, to move ahead with that. And also, I want to thank the, the university as well for, for having the courage to work with us on this. Uh, I think this will be um, really, I think, a poster child project for hopefully many other IP NFTs uh, to be created um, and really usher in a new age of, of research funding. Um, as uh, the number I showed earlier, there's, I mean, there's crazy volume in terms of it happening in the NFT space right now. And every time I see those numbers, I think, hey, what if we were able to funnel uh, some of that liquidity and, um, and some of those funds into, into the research space and into the biopharma space where I think it's, uh, it, it's really needed. Um, and I think I just got a signal that uh, we may have concluded the transaction. Um, I think Audi, Audi would be the one to confirm that. Not exactly. Quite Let's hand over the word to Audi. I'm going to share while we do conclude. Um, so this is the transfer. Let me get here. There we go. Let me know if you can see my screen. Maybe for reference as well, I mean, a normal NFT, this NFT could now be very easily transferred. Uh, I think the complexity in this transaction is effectively through the security of, of the escrow contract. Um, Correct. Yeah, and the interaction that happens, the, uh, yeah, that happens on, the, on the Nevermind gateway, which is, this isn't a normal NFT in that sense. It's a more complex transaction and it's also not just a transfer, it's effectively um, a, a, yeah, a, a sale. Okay, so this is the transaction right here that transferred this NFT to my address as an agent of VitaDAO. 
So what I'm getting ready to do here is this is um, the address and that I'm transferring from, and this is the contract address of the DAO. And this is the token ID. So I'm going to write this transaction. Oops, I got to connect. I'm gonna write this transaction. Get you guys out of the way. Uh, um, all right, and then we're looking at the transaction or the, the IP NFT on OpenSea right here. So this has the description of what this is along with the uh, agreements and the information about the IP NFT. And once this transaction Let's go ahead and speed that up. Yeah, sorry, the gas the gas has been pretty unpredictable here. Um, we had we were up to two hundred at one point during this call, <laughs> so um, that uh, that slowed us down a little bit. <laughs> I love how we're all expecting this process though to be to like take a couple of seconds. I mean, that's how how long it can sometimes take. Remember yeah. that if this was like a transaction in let's say our legal system, the time required the amount of yeah. The amount of legal engineering and and lawyering required to conduct a transfer like this. Just keep refreshing, Audi. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fun part. Nothing. Else. Everything's gone uh, reasonably well up to this point, of course. <laughs> uh, so yeah, owned by me. I'm I'm wanting this to get updated here. In the meantime, um, I just would like, in the in the name of uh, the guys from Molecule who have been working closely with the Nevermind team, actually um, take the chance to to highlight a couple of people who have like done uh, a lot of work on this in, in the past. You already heard from them. I just want to mention it again and thank them for for their efforts in the past weeks, especially um, being the Nevermind team around Itor. And Rudolf, uh, Rod, you guys have um, yeah been supporting us here for a long time, and uh, I think it is um, also looking forward for us a very exciting path that we are on, building this out into a system which not only we will be using to transact these IP NFTs, but in the long term, a lot of people will be able to to actually use without without us ever needing to interfere in it, because that's at the end kind of the dream of the Web three space. That it's all trustless and permissionless and people can actually fund those research projects that desperately need those funds so again thank you so much for for your effort and uh yeah i hope we will be seeing those transactions go through from my side um i've seen now also the re the reward coming um and arriving here at the molecule side uh and our um on our side so i will now be moving those into the molecule um multi six and with that, uh, the transaction, the IP NFT transaction uh, is concluded. And now awesome. this is owned by this address here. And that should show right here. Sorry, let me get the uh, Raphael contract up. And you can see and this is the, there's the token. And so this is now held by the DAO in the DAO's vault. 
Congratulations. Ooh, massive <laughs> shout out to everyone. Um, and yeah, it's definitely an amazing step. Wow. Um, yeah, thanks, Lemon. Thanks, Oli. Thanks to the Nevermind team. And also um, to Paul and Tyler from Molecule. Also, Theo from VitaDAO. And yeah, thank you so much, everyone. And also, a big, big congrats to Morton that um, this is happening now and that you can be part of that next step. And I see that Paul also would like to add some words. Yeah, from my side, also, I mean, a, a massive thank you to everyone on this call, also to the people who couldn't be on the call. Um, a big thank you to Stefano for, for helping organize this and, and, and lead us all up to this point. Massive thank you uh, to Audi uh, for being the best technical lead that Vidada could have wished for uh, and really helping and battle testing this. I think this transaction must have been, must have been run in, in test probably 10 over 10 times before moving into production today. Uh, a huge thank you to Clemens, uh, who, was who was instrumental in, in really helping design, uh, design the IP NFT implementation and, and help implement it together with, with, um, with Kiko and Nevermind. Don, uh, Aitor, Rud Rudolf, uh, the entire Kiko and Nevermind team, massive thank you to you guys. I think your, uh, the data storage and access solution that you guys integrated with this IP NFT will be a game changer in, in the biopharma space. And we're really looking forward to, yeah, to completing further, yeah, further transactions like this. And um, yeah, again, Morton and, and, and a big thank you to the entire VitaDAO team, obviously really, really, really excited to kick off the research today. Um, and, uh, and yeah, move on to, yeah, the actual R&D R &D phase. Um, can, I, can I say two words? Um, I mean, I, I also, of course, want to thank everybody and particularly also the DAO and all the people that voted to fund this project. This is, you know, a big responsibility that that now I think rests on, on me and my team. And I will work very, very hard not to, to let you down and produce hopefully some great results. And uh, from my team, I just want to thank Michael, uh, who's on the call, uh, uh, Nasia, uh, Jonas, and Daniela, and um, of course everybody else that are working in the lab. Um, and yeah, thank you all so much. Yeah, thank you everyone also for joining tonight. Um, I think it was a pleasure um, for everyone being live um, at this great actual happening. Um, and and. Yeah, it's very hard to put that all in words. Um, thanks everyone for joining us tonight. And um, yeah, if you have more questions, jump in our Discord, um, ask them there, um, join VitaDAO, and we're looking forward for many more and exciting uh, 